Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today we have Regina Gulbinas with us. And she has been on the show previously because she is just an outstanding person with a lot of uh, valuable information to teach people, especially people who are in the working industry and are going through a lot of stress and they feel a little bit off balance and they want to try to get back on track. So Regina's here and she's going to explain some of the great things that she does and how she could actually help you. So Regina, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do and give them an idea of all the great things that you could do to help people. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me again back on the show huge compliment when people invite you back that's for sure <laughs> that's a good sign that's it's a definitely good, a good sign <laughs> that's a good sign for the listener if you're bringing people back so um i've been a life and business strategist for the last 20 years the the first 17 of the 20 i have spent reorganizing failing corporations back to profitability of course there was other people on board because there was a lot of it through chapter 11 bankruptcy so uh, from taking from massive millions of negative to ma you know millions in profitability. So that's, I love it. That's a lot of fun. I still do it kind of on a down low when the people kind of find out about me and reach out. And three years ago, I moved into the online space three and a half years ago. And I work with uh, online business owners, coaches, entrepreneurs, uh, CEOs, businesses, business, it really doesn't matter. Right. And I help them scale their online business to profitability, structure it correctly, so I, I teach them how to build a business that's an actual business, not just to make a few dollars to pay a few bills, but to actually create a sustainable, profitable, long-term brand. I think that's great. You know, I find, you know, I speak to so many business owners and I find that so many, so many of them, especially after COVID were hit with so many stresses, you know, being shut down and then having to start back up again, the loss of income during the time of COVID and then trying to build themselves back up and trying to get people who um, would work for them. And they're finding that one problem I find is a lot of a lot of business owners are not buying good employment. The people do not want to come in. They, they don't want to work like they used to. And it's very hard to run a business when you don't have the proper employees to the lack of funding during the time that they were, you know, shut down, you know, they lost a lot of money, but they still had to pay their bills. So they ended up financially in financial stress. And we know that what financial stress could do to a lot you know, mentally, physically, you know, the whole works for a person and people, you know, are struggling. They're struggling to make ends meet and they're struggling to find that balance. Like, how do I get back to where I was before, you know, and so many people just don't know how, and they're stressing out. I can see people, so many people I spoke with are coming down with illnesses, you know, that are stress related because of this. So what do you say to somebody like that? You know, that's going through all these struggles you know, what's, what's step one? How do they start to get themselves back, you know, to where they were, you know, to get themselves, you know, to that point again? Yeah, really, really great question. I mean, what a way to start the show. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get back to the way things were because everything has shifted so much. What yes. used to be not normal is now the norm. Everybody's right. on Zoom. You don't have to go to work anymore. People don't want to work. So everything has shifted. I honestly believe that this is the emotional decisions are not profitable. We can't make profitable decisions from an emotional state. And the moment Good people point. people's safety is threatened, and what threatens our safety? Money, because yes. money provides for safety. The moment that's threatened, we cannot have a clear understanding and a clear vision, a clear perspective of what's happening because we're fully operating from fear at that point. This is when I highly advise talk to somebody have a conversation, have talked to somebody, it doesn't have to be a business coach, but somebody who can give you a different perspective and a clear picture, because there is always a solution. There's always a way to pivot. But as long as you're running on your emotions and on fear, it is not possible to see the long picture. So the first thing is honestly, get an outside perspective. There is always a way to pivot. Yes. We see people succeed in the worst of times all the time, because they're able to take the emotion out. They're able to to think clearly and they're able to move fast. So I, the first thing is have an outside perspective. See how you can shift your business. Sometimes people didn't pivot. They just stopped what they were doing and they created something else. They created something new. Look at, there is always needs in the market. 
There are always needs in the market to be filled. What can you fill in the market? Maybe you have to fine tune your whole business structure. Maybe you have to revise your offer or your product or your service to something that's more suitable for the market now. But also as we're going through the financial crisis, as people are talking about the recession, these are the times, and I mentioned this in another podcast as well, these are the times that actually the strongest brands come out of. Because while a lot of people are freaking out and they just kind of throw in the towel, yeah. some, some emotionally and mentally strong individuals are saying, okay, I understand the game. I know how this works. The worst of times create global brands. The worst right. of times create companies that last for generations. And this is where you decide where you're going to be after this is over, where are you going to stand? You know, now that, you know, like you said, the audience has changed, you know, people are, you know, not the same. They're doing things differently. Merchandising is not the same. You know, you go in, more people are buying online than they're going into stores right now. Things are just changing like crazy in every industry. It's like, now your business, you have this structured business that was doing well at one point. Now the audience seems to be changing. Everything around you seems to be changing. How do you figure out what my new audience is? You know, how do you take a step back and try to figure out, okay, it's not the same as it was. I'm still losing money. I'm not getting back to where I was. Maybe my audience has, cha my audience has changed. Maybe I need to make some changes within my business. How does a person figure that out structurally? Like, so that, you know, that how do you know, first step one, how do you figure out your new audience? Well, first of all, you got to figure out, are you really not profitable or are you really kind of uh, not growing or losing money because the audience has changed or are you just not, uh, or you need to get better at running your business, right? So that's number right. one. Sometimes mm -hmm. changing, changing from audience A to audience B, if you don't know how to run a business, you're just changing. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to incur the same problems here as you are going to there. So that is the first thing that I think it's important for people to understand. But then if, how do you know if there, if it's changed, if you've tried everything, like literally you're trying everything that's supposed to work and you're giving it all and it's just nothing is working. So look at the market. Who are you talking to? Who are you selling to? How are you selling to them? What is the offer? Because sometimes it's not the offer. People don't know how to present their offer. Yes. You know, there are so many things. There are so many variables. And we see this in the online space all the time. People struggling to sell their offers. The offer is amazing. The person selling the offer is brilliant. But nobody knows what's inside if they don't understand the packaging, what's outside. Right. So you look at the market. Is there a need? Is there, you know, do people have, um, like the coaching space, for example, there's a massive need. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on a, on a personalized coaching. That's insane. Right. The amount of money that's being transacted, there is definitely a need. So in any market, there is always a need. But the first thing is to decide, am I really operating as a business owner? Right. Because it's like, you know, be, going from one uh, relationship where you don't know how to uh, facilitate the relationship in a healthy way, getting into another relationship doesn't get you a better relationship. You just have another relationship that's, that's actually as backwards. So the same thing in business. Are you really running your business correctly and well in a healthy manner? And if you are, nothing is working. Maybe it's time to shift and then look at the market. Because ultimately, there is a market for uh, for anything. And people sell the craziest stuff now. Yes, the they do. Craziest things. And they're still managed to make money. Yeah. And that blows my mind. I see that all the time. You know, people come out with the weirdest things and they're actually doing really well because it's unique. It's different. And people are so intrigued by the uniqueness that they'll say, what the hell? Let me try it. You know, and it's amazing. Sometimes I see the dumbest products and they're making millions of dollars. And I'm like, OMG, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, it's so, and it's so dumb that you would never even think about it. Right. Exactly. Because it's so dumb. And you're like, I wouldn't, my brain doesn't even function that way. Right. And yeah. People make millions and sometimes it's a product for $2.99 and people make millions because they know how to get it to the masses. So it's often not even, um, it's often the person driving the vehicle, number right. one. It, it's really often the person driving the vehicle and being able to make profitable decisions. Like I said, a lot of the times uh, people make decisions from emotion. People make decisions from their insecurity. People make decisions from their unhealed trauma. People just make decisions from the wrong place. If right. You like really be a, a real life business owner, CEO, knowing how to make decisions from what point, from what state of mind to make decisions is going to drive everything else. Because ultimately the profitability of your company is just the byproduct of the decisions you make. A company yeah. that 
it's like an infant of a child. They can do nothing for them. Our children are just a byproduct of what we put into them. Companies, yes. same thing. You're right. And you know, what I think, I think sometimes business owners get so confused is that they're so into that trying to make their business succeed that they don't understand the marketing and they let somebody else do the marketing for them. And you know, they're running their business, but they know nothing. So they don't know if the person's doing the right thing or not. Now, you know, I see all the time, I hear people saying, it's the CEO that drives the traffic to your, your website, you know, then you hear people saying, no, 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 it's the marketing, it's the in Im images that you put that drive people to your to your your, your web page and some people say you don't even need a web page you just need the right advertising mm -hmm. you know what's your point of view what do you think draws the most profitability to a business that's that's either you know trying to you know um trying to sell a service or a product where do you see people making the most success rate the highest one people, people that invest time money effort uh, and effort into growing brand recognition brand recognition mm, very oh, because there are names out there where they can sell oh my god anything and because their name is associated with quality and high standard they can literally sell anything and people will buy if spend the same amounts of money right brand recognition and this is the thing that takes time and people don't want to invest in it right and so you know that I makes it now and well, do you want it now or do you want it long term? Right, exactly. And it makes the most sense, you know, brand recognition. When you hear about certain brands right away, the word quality comes into your head because you, they've been around for a while and they've invested so much money into that brand recognition that you know that if you buy it from that brand, it's going to be good. Yes. Now, yes. for small companies, how do they build that brand recognition? What's the best way for a, a small a small company that has X amount of dollars to try to focus on building a brand recognition for themselves? Quality. Quality. I'll give you I'll give you a great example. I started doing I'm doing a lot of podcasts now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are messaging me saying this person recommended you. This person said. I have now brand recognition in the podcast business environment because my name now is associated with high quality content. I just did a podcast. They emailed it to me. He, the guy literally wrote to me, you are the best guest we've ever had. He recommended me to somebody else. I posted the short on my social media and he put in there high quality. Regina is the real deal. So he's recommending to somebody else with a huge audience. And then, and he was, and I was recommended to him by somebody else with a mad, like top 1% podcast I did with them. They were blown away by the quality. They recommended me. He recommended me. My name has now brand recognition when it comes. If you want to grow your business and get this woman into your podcast, she's going to serve your audience brand recognition. How? Because insane amount of value, quality, and content every time that I show up. So right. the, you have to be with podcasts, it's just the point is people start to associate your name with high quality so if you're a small business people think small businesses can make a lot of money small right. businesses sometimes actually make more profit than big companies because they don't have the overhead they don't have the staff they don't have right you know, how much you make what are you left with i've seen yes. people make a million dollars a month and left with a negative uh you know 200 a quarter of a million dollars negative at the end of the month yes. and i've seen make a hundred thousand dollars a month in sales and be left with thirty thousand dollars pure profit when everything is said and done so who's actually uh making more money right the guy and who's making a million and holds a negative at the end of the month or the guy who's making a hundred thousand ten percent of that but has uh thirty thousand left in the bank every single month exactly. small business doesn't mean small business it's the, it's the profitability but for small businesses over deliver on quality be known as quality because if you're known for quality, you will be able to charge more. Right. People will pay more money for the peace of mind that when you handle their product or their service, they don't have to babysit you. They will pay you more. They will pay premium price right. for the peace of mind that whatever they order from you is going to come back exactly as it was ordered. They don't have to babysit the process. They can hand it off to you and walk off. That costs money and that's what people will pay for. Yes, I agree. I agree. And, you know, so many people, you know, they, you know, I was talking to one person actually even today and she has a small business and she finally got rid of a, a huge amount of her staff. And now she's doing fabulous. She said, I got rid of my staff. I'm able to do it myself. 
and the things that I was, you know, making them do, I'm doing. And at the end of the month, I'm making so much more money because I'm paying out less. And she said, I should have did this a long, long time ago. Instead, I was hiring people to do X, Y, and Z. But then at the end of the month, at the end of the week, I was paying these people. And by the end of the month, I had very little profit, you know? So, you know, now that she, she got, she let go of a huge portion of her staff and she didn't really need them as much. She is, she's, pro, she's, be, she's become very profitable in her business. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. A lot of times people hire ahead of time, um, foreseeing the future revenue. Yeah. And spending money ahead of time before you are. So you basically you're spending money from the future. So by the time you get to the future, you're still in the same hole that, that, that you started with. You just have more people to pay. Right. Exactly. Now, how do you feel about testimonials? You know, people always say you need test testimonials. You need testimonials. Do you think testimonials have a lot of value to your brand recognition? I do. I do, especially at the beginning, but also before you get testimonials, how do you, uh, how do you do this? Right. Like you, uh, you become the testimonial. You become the testimonial. It's one client at a time, one one showing up at a time, one uh, high value at a time. It's literally, it's one at a time. I think testimonials are great. I think the testimonials, I mean, I use them still for my business, for my clients. When there's testimonials, right. I know how to leverage them. I know how to expand on them. I know how to do all the things to, to draw more people into the audience with them. Um, yeah, I think people want to know that other people are happy with their product and the service. Uh, absolutely. Testimonial is just another asset to help you uh, sell what you have. Right, right. It's just another asset. It's just uh, more, it's like somebody recommended me to a podcast. That's a testimonial. Right. So now instead of me selling it to the person saying, I'm going to be a great guest. They're like, they messaged me, said, I heard, I heard you're the boss when it comes to certain things. I would love to have you <laughs> in the podcast. Here's the link. So did, did the testimonial work, so to speak? Somebody putting their seal of approval on me? Absolutely. It cuts you the time, money, effort, and everything else. So they, they did the job for me, basically. So right. the testimonials a lot of times do the job for you where you have to say, I'm great. This is what I do. Blah, blah, blah. The testimonial says, Stacy is great. This is what she does. This is right. how she can change your life. I feel like word of mouth is the, the best, you know, form of advertising. I feel like, you know, people could spend so much money on advertising, but really when it all boils down to it, my own opinion, I feel like word of mouth has a huge impact. It might even have a better impact, you know, for, you know, some of the advertising that goes on Facebook ads, this, that, everything, but, oh, word, you know, I feel like word of mouth is, is, is a fabulous way to market, especially if you're a small business, I think, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on ads, you know, if you can get the word of mouth, if you can get the good clients, I think that brings up your brand recognition. And I think you could actually, you know, build your business that way. Do you feel like that also? A hundred percent. This is where people need to get creative when they say, I don't have money to advertise. You don't always need money to advertise. You, right. First of all, we're, we, we have access to billions of people online for free. I mean, yeah. like, we're like, what, what's, the, what's the challenge here, right? Show up and tell people what you do and what you got. But uh, if you don't have money, get creative. That's part of being a business owner. Right. And this is what I said, you create brand recognition if you don't have the capital to invest in advertising by doing a job better than somebody else, by doing a job faster than somebody else, by over delivering that going to somebody else instead of you next time is just like a feels like a stupid decision for somebody. Right. By having because people recommending you to other people is now when they're recommending you to their friends with whom they have credibility, they're doing the advertising for you. But again, this because... Organic marketing takes time. It's like building a, a relationship with your best friend or yeah. a lover. It takes a few minutes. It doesn't happen overnight. Definitely. And people, this is what the people don't want to do. They're like, I want it now. Again, do you want it now or do you want it long term? So yes. you don't need a lot of money. If you don't have it, my my personality is I'm highly resourceful. If we don't have it, we're not even going to worry about not having it. We're going to figure out a way to get it done. Yes. So, okay, you don't have the capital to do it. Let's put it to the side. What is, what do you have time capital? Do you have uh, uh, knowledge? Do you have uh, people that you know? Can we pay affiliate commission? Can we pay and get referrals? Can we, you know, how can we leverage the audience of other people? All of the things that like, don't get stuck on what you have, what you do not have, use and leverage to the max what you do have. It may be one or two things. Right. One or two things. 
Now, what about these businesses, especially like practices? Like, you know, um, I see a lot of people, they, they're just so busy with their clientele or they're busy with their patients and they just don't have time to, you know, build their brand recognition up and they end up spending tons of money on marketing. Are there ways that uh, that a, a doctor or a pa patient, you know, um, can actually build up their recognition without spending tons of money too? The Usually a doctor should have somebody who runs the office and does that stuff. A doctor is not a business owner. Right. A doctor is not a business owner. Okay. A lot of, yeah. A lot of these people are not business owners. They're really, 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 really good at what they do. They can't be a doctor and an effective business owner at the same time. Right. I believe people or uh, really or great attorneys. Yes. Their job is to be an attorney. They're not a business exactly. Owner. You're not business people, so stick to what you know. You're not saving money by not hiring people. You're wasting money. You're not getting the clients. I think it's silly when people think they can do it themselves. Why do it yourself? If a doctors, uh, attorneys, therapists, places like that, you're not a business owner. Like, right. No, no need to be a hero. Get somebody who can help you. That's just the reality. You can. Yeah. We all have our strengths. Right. I would never be a great doctor. I would never be a good attorney. I'm not great with line items. I'm really good like with global operations. So I stick to what I know. But for me to do all the line items, I have somebody helping me. Yeah. With administration and all of that. I'm not going to even try to do that because I'm just going to blow up my whole business. That's not my strength. So right. nobody do that and then get people to support you in other in other areas. Because running a business is a full-time job. Just the infrastructure of a business yeah. is a full-time job. And if you as a doctor hire somebody to even do paid ads for you and you're not a business owner. So now you can not clearly tell them what they would, what you actually need from a business infrastructure. Yeah. They're just running ads to without knowing who they're running to. Now you've just uh, um, given away tens of thousands of dollars yeah. in return. And you're like, what's wrong? Well, the only thing that's wrong is you don't have the right support by you that says, okay, this is what needs to be done. Right. So if you're in a professional, a doctor, attorney on things like that, no need to be a hero. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I, I found that people that do that, they, they burn out and then they're just, you know, they, you know, they think they could do it all. They try to do it all, you know, but like you said, you know, I, it leads to burnout and then, you know, and then how good of a, of a doctor or attorney or, you know, a coach can you be when you're totally burnt out, you know, and you see that happen all the time. But what's the point of trying to do it all yourself to say, you know, there's no medal of honor to, that says, great job, you're stressed out, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I mean, there's no pat on the back and says, you know, yeah. you're like two, two minutes away from death because you're exhausted. I mean, why? Why do that? I don't understand why people do that. Right. No, like I said, no need to be a hero. Know what you're good at. Stick what you're good at. I'm, I'm, I suck at a lot of things. I really, really do. I'm excellent at building businesses and helping people create a quality of life that they're absolutely obsessed about. That's, and I understand money and I understand people. So anything that's not in that category, I just don't touch it. I, I, I sub it out. Right. I don't want to know how it's done. I don't even want to try to understand how it's done. That's not my strength. Yeah. I shine, shine where you shine. And there is enough qualified people that you can um, get to help you with that. And you'll grow faster. You'll be happier. And, you know, I also found that a lot of people talk about the Google business page and they say that Google business page can help excel your business, you know, if you build it up. Now, how do you do you, what, do you have any takes on that about Google business page or, you know, how effective it is? I have no idea what that is to begin with. Oh, okay. On Google, they have a page where you can make a, a, a personalized page of your business. You can put pictures, you can put all that other good stuff. And so it's kind of like a, your own ad on Google, you know, about your business. You kind of walk into the business and see what it's all about. But, you know, they in, in the marketing world, they make a big deal about that. But, you know, I'm like, how effective is that really? You know, you know. So I want to say something to that. This is interesting. Um, these are all just tools. They're all tools, yes. People still have to drive traffic to that. You still have to sell at the end of the day. A hundred percent, yes. I've had people tell me, I have a sales page and I have this and I have that and nothing is working. Well, it's a tool. If you have a tool in your toolbox and you don't know how to use it, it's just a great, nice little shiny thing in your toolbox. Yeah, and sometimes I find like too many tools can be overwhelming and how do you spread your time? You know, again, you know, someone that's trying to do it all, being the magical person, you can only spread yourself so far, you know, and you could have so many tools, but it's not going to work, you know? 
I yeah. like I like the the thing where you talk about brand recognition. I think that actually is a number one quality. You know, I think that that's something people really should look into is building their brand recognition. Now, if you have, if you had to give like three pointers to a small business, how would you tell them to start building up their brand recognition? Uh, if they don't have the capital to invest, number one, in say, okay, so leverage social media. I don't care what you're selling for the most part, leverage social media. It's free. Right. I don't understand when people are walking around saying, I don't know what to do. It's free. Like you have yeah. it for free. If this, here's the, here's the crazy part. If social media was paid, everybody would be flocking to social media, trying to use it. Right. But if it's free. No, again, this is why I tell people charge people top dollar because nobody appreciates free information. Nobody cares when it's free. The right. more more skin in the game, the more they pay attention. So uh, number one, leverage social media. You all have knowledge and expertise that you're selling. Be consistent. Like I'm on social media every single day. My clients always come and say, you have such a strong presence on social media. It's a free platform. Why wouldn't yeah, I move? Like, exactly. You know? so be very, very consistent. Uh, provide high value. Be recognized as a top, top tier value provider. Don't you want to be known, known for the value? And another way is to leverage the uh, leverage your current clients, leverage their audience, le pay people commission, pay people referrals, thank people. So, I mean, for my courses, for example, I give people 50% of the top for referrals. Right. So I've got some courses like the $3,000, $4,000. People love it. Yeah. They're like, you're paying so much. Why do you give so much away? They've done all the marketing and advertising for me. They're, they're bringing people and I don't care. I'll give them 50% of the time. Exactly. I am happy to pay people. So um, have, have, have referral, referral structure, uh, leverage social media, be insanely consistent. Nothing will ever beat consistency and quality, 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 quality. Here is the thing that I want to say is that a lot of people focus on the sale, but not the client retention. Yes. A lot of people focus on a sale. I understand. And I, this is what I really want to get across is this. People see the sale as the end of the transaction. Okay. I got the sale. I teach my clients. The sale is the beginning of the relationship. The sale is not the end of the transaction. The sale is the beginning of the relationship because getting people in, if they're not happy, if there is no transformation, if there is no quality, if there is no value, not only are they not coming back, but people are more likely to talk crap. Yes. Good things about you. 100%. There is negative testimonials just as much as positive. People talk more crap than, than the good stuff. So what's the client retention? Right. Focus on client retention. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, but understanding that the sale is the beginning of the, the, the relationship, not the end of the transaction. Is right. Is huge mindset because once your mind understands it you begin to show up like that okay now the sale is done now let me hyper focus on the transformation so and i see insane um yield from that like my client retention is high like people stay with me for years in the, in the online space because it's really unheard of people go from program pro to program normally one coach right. to another i have people that are still with me that i started three and a half years ago with and they're still in all masterminds and private coaching over and over and over again. Why? I'm not just focused on a sale. That's the beginning. I am so focused on the relationship. I'm so focused on equality. I'm so focused on nurturing the whole thing that new come in and the old stay. So it exponentially yeah. grows. And I think that's a great point because I get those comments too. It's like, oh my God, you're so sincere what you do. You care so much. And I think that goes a long way. You know, when you, when someone just wants the dollar bill and they just grab that dollar bill and then you don't see them again, or you don't hear from them for months, you know, mm -hmm. that the value of that person goes downhill and then word of mouth, you know, people talk crap about the person, you know, how they just wanted my money, blah, 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 blah. You know, and the people say, oh, but negative advertisement is good too. You know, it could be good. I don't know about that. You know, they say it could bring attention, but you know, when you go on, let's say you go on an Amazon page and you see, you know, 300, you know, reviews and 40% of those reviews are negative reviews. How much, you know, how much likely are you going to actually buy that product? You know, you're going to yeah. think twice, you know? So, you know, maybe one or two crazy reviews might catch someone's eye, but when you have a lot of negative reviews, most likely that person is going to sway away from you and whatever you're trying to sell, you know? hundred percent. It also depends what you're selling, right? You don't want like a family therapist that's broken up 25 <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's the guy I want to help me. Yeah. You know? 
exactly exactly good point <laughs> you, know, you don't want to talk about a doctor who's lost 50 percent of their patients to uh you know an unfortunate events so you you really have to be careful with that as well but that's again that's all built over time and this yeah. is one thing this is i want it now you know and i tell clients listen great love doesn't happen overnight great no. relationships friendships don't happen overnight good clients relationships are, are built over time right doesn't i mean now it's it's people are selling you know get results in five seconds you know make a hundred thousand dollars a month in, you know in five minutes but that's not the truth right uh, you know you can't lose 20 pounds in five days uh, by eating a hamburger and if anybody <laughs> sells you and you buy that then you deserve the results that you won't get you know what i yeah, mean yeah exactly you have to be discerning you have to be discerning but investing the time intentional time yes into what you're doing it's like again i always compare it to either being a parent or having an intimate relationship with your partner when you show up present uh you're there it's intentional your partner feels it your children feel it yes so do your clients because at the end of the day we're god made creatures and we want to feel seen we want to feel heard we want to feel important yes always talk about the fact that we miss the basic human principles. I don't care what you sell, who your client is, the basic human needs, not just wants, but needs are all the same. Yes. We all want to feel important. We all want to feel seen. We all want to feel heard. So it doesn't matter what you sell. If you can make your clients and your audience feel like they're important, they're a human being, you see them, you hear them, you're not just brushing them off. Don't you think people are going to come back over and over and over and over again and bring other people with them? Of course. Oh, 100%. They yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I wanted to ask you, because we were talking about this before. Now, we're talking about businesses. We're talking about brand recognition, building the small business up, saving the people, and 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 helping people actually focus on what's important. Now, how does a person, their work balance? You know, people get so caught up sometimes in the wrong things, and they get so stressed out because things aren't working the way they think in their mind it should work out. How does a person find that, that equal balance so they could actually enjoy life and build a profitable business at the same time. Because what's the point of putting all your energy into a business, getting so stressed out and just focusing on that business, but then you're not focusing on the family that you have, or maybe the things in life that are important to you. You know, you have to have that balance. How would you say to a business owner, you know, someone that's running a business, you know, it takes, it, you also need to renew yourself at the same time in order to succeed. So I don't know if it's possible to have 100% balance 100% of the time. Sometimes your family needs you a little bit more. Sometimes your business needs you a little more. So if you've right. got family, first of all and foremost, make sure you've got a partner who understands what it means that you're running a business. Number right. one. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just going to be at a moment. Uh, it, it's not going to work. You can't. It's not going to be a family. It's not going to be a business. But I think a lot of people lack balance because they lack clarity. Yeah. They have the shiny object syndrome. They're they're busy. Most people are busy and not productive. Right. Two very different things. I see that a lot. Very, I am busy all day. What are you doing? I don't know. I've literally had clients tell me, I don't know. I've been busy. I've, I've Nothing is really done because you're doing crap that doesn't matter. Right. Like, what, are you touching? what are your hands? And I tell my clients, if you're, if you're the, at the top of the business, like if you're the decision maker, if it doesn't make you money, don't touch it. Exactly. It, do it. Mm -hmm. Stop touching it. Not, not everything needs your fingerprints. Maybe two or three things actually need your fingerprints and your decision-making ability on it. If it doesn't make you money, give it to somebody who's better at it. Right. Your job is to create a business. So number one, people lack clarity. And without clarity, you don't have a structure. So they're just running around doing a little bit of everything every single day. Yeah. Number two, lack of focus because they think this thing is going to work. This thing is going to work. This thing. And they're like, oh my God, holy crap, nothing works. Of course it doesn't. You, you haven't planted anything and watered it long enough for it to act like you, you kill the seed before you plant it. Like yeah. stop doing it. And um, again, that all creates lack of structure because if yeah. you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know where you're going, if you're constantly doubting yourself, it means you keep changing the course and you're like the ship you can see in a cartoon that's just stuck, you know, going in circle, circle, circle. Yeah. Um, round and round because you don't know what you're doing so right. a lot of times the burnout comes from lack of clarity and lack of structure that's it and that comes from lack of belief that you can achieve what you actually want to achieve so you keep changing course every five minutes yeah 
So it, we, we're, the, the conversation is always the same. You will never grow past your mindset blocks. Right. So what, are, what is the solution? Work on yourself, work on your mind, work on all of the things. Like in my business and with my clients, I keep everything stupid simple. And my, somebody asked me this morning, she goes, how do I do this? How do I do that? I said, whatever is the shortest path to getting you to move and get, get you to activate and start selling the offer. Whatever is the shortest path. Right. You have 25 steps. Let's take out the 24. What do you need to do? Show up and tell people about it. Boom, done. Yes. That's it. Whatever is the shortest path to getting you to the outcome, that's the thing. People start complicating it and making this into a rocket science project because they think the steps, the tools, the bells and whistles is what gets them the results. And this is what we just talked about a few minutes ago. Yeah. Tools are just the tools. Right. I have no sales pages. I don't use my website I, because I don't believe that you need it. The moment you believe you need the bells and whistles, you're going to focus on that. My days are very simple. Yes. Very simple. I do some podcasts. I do marketing advertising all day long because I have a strong presence online. I sell every single day. I'm a business. I'm not ashamed of it. I hope everybody sells every single day. I serve every single day. And I talk to my clients in, in, in the messaging app or on a calls all day. I mean, you cannot get more simple than that. Yeah. That's it. Because I, I don't agree. believe that I need everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's excellent advice. Excellent. You know, I think, I think that's the problem is that people are focusing on too many different things because they don't have a clear clarity. And I think that that is like, I think the strongest point that in our entire discussion, I think it all boils down to having clarity. You know what, what works and what is going to make you money and focus on that you, because if you focus on trying to have a beautiful website all your energy is going to go into that website and before you know it it's five six o'clock you're drained and you can't focus on the things that actually make you money you know and it's really very simple like you said focus on the things that can make you money and do the simple things that you know will draw the traffic to, to have people want to purchase your ser your service or your product and make it that simple. I, I love it. I love it. 100%. And I think also, you know, that what I realized with clients and just for myself, kind of observing people over the years, when we're confident in our abilities, we don't need to rely on the bells and whistles and tools. Yes, I agree. The more confident the more we understand that we are the product, that we are the biggest asset company, mm -hmm. the less we need everything outside of us. I believe, I, I firmly stand after 20 years that I'm excellent at what I do. I just have sounded arrogant, but I have 20 years of evidence of that. Right. Because I believe that. And I believe that the only thing I need to really create great results for my clients is myself and my brain. Right. I automatically don't feel like I need the other stuff. Maybe later, if I feel like it, if I really have qualified people doing it, I'm never going to touch technology if my life depended on it. That's not my thing. I hate it. <laughs> I have the same technological skills of a two-year-old. My, my, you know, I still, I use an iPhone and I still have my kids sometimes helping me with whatever stuff. So I don't touch what's not mine, but because yeah. I believe I am the greatest asset because I have 20 years of historical evidence yes. of the main asset of, of what I do. Nothing else uh, has the, has the power over my abilities. Right. Not stage, not this, not that. I literally show up through my cell phone every single day and it's working just fine. So the moment you're, the, the more you're confident in your abilities, the more you're confident and secure in who you are and what you do and the transformation you provide, the less you will need, the <laughs> less you will believe that you will need. Right. Now, do you, do you, do you try to sell through your podcast or do you try to put a little bit on your, on your Facebook or social media? Cause that's free. I don't have my own podcast. Oh, I thought you said you had your podcast. Oh, you no, show no. up on people's podcasts. No, That's no, what you no, meant. No. Yeah. Oh, no, I show up and I sell on social media every single day. My Facebook, my Instagram, my stories. I sell every single day with zero shame, multiple offers per day. Excellent. I like I that. Here seven days a week telling you exactly what I have. I have an offer. I have a one-on-one. -on -one, I have this and this. Zero shame. I'm a business. I treat it like a business. Now, let me ask you a question. A lot of times people have their own personal websites and then they have their pages and people always say, don't put your, your, your sales on your personal page. Only put it on your, on your business page on, on, let's say like Facebook. Do you believe in that? Or do you say, just throw it around to the people that you think are going to be most interested? 
Well, technically by the rules, you're not supposed to sell on your personal. Also, everybody sells on their personal because business pages get no engagement because right. they spend the money on the advertisement. Right. So what do you do? Do you do you put it on your personal page? Only personal. I don't use my business. I have got it there. I haven't checked in like in a year. <laughs> Because I myself, I get the most engagement on my personal page. And I have so many people following my personal page. But, you know, the rules of marketing tell you differently. So, but. Okay, so. Differently. This is the thing. But this is such a great point. Who made up the rules? Exactly. I don't even know who the hell made up the rules. They were just studies done in the course of the of decades, you know, put together. Okay, that that's fine. But I kind of like selling, you know, I sell in personal, I sell in stories, I tell people what I have, I email my list, I tell my current clients, there is a new offer, uh, you should get in there. Also, the power of brand recognition. So here's what I want to say. When I tell my clients, for example, you need to be in this particular offer. Yeah, at the time they buy without question. What I want to say to that is, they know that I will never tell them to get into an offer if it's not for them. Right. That is the power of brand recognition. That is the trust. And I like that because you know what? They are, are I'm not even going to mention their names, but they are really powerful speakers out there. And they are, are, you know, powerful coaches out there. And they will taunt the hell out of you. They will have people who sell for them and they won't leave you alone. And, mm -hmm. you know, those people kind of turn me off. Like I could like the message they're getting across, but they're so aggressive in how they sell that mm -hmm. you get to the point where you got to get turned off. But if someone opens up an opportunity and they don't pressure you, but yet they show you the options and what they could do for you, I find that much more appealing than aggressive sellers. Yeah, I'm not an aggressive seller. Uh, people know uh, uh, People know that if I'm saying that you need to be in this offer, they know that I didn't message every person that I know. They right. know that a lot of them because I've established, my, I've always been like that. I don't want the, I've actually had people try to join some of my programs like masterminds or private. And I literally told them that's not the best fit for you. While I could make three, four times more money. I that's, I don't take people on just to take them on. You know what I mean? Right. And I told them, the mastermind is not for you, but the program at 10% of the cost is actually free. And people ask me like, why do you do that? Because I'm like, they don't belong there. Why, why would I want to take somebody's money? And then energetically there is an alignment. They don't belong there. I don't feel good about having somebody pay me. Yeah. I, oh, what kind of a mentor am I? Right. Exactly. So, so, but that is the power of the, of the brand. So when P, when you actually can tell people this course is free and they're like, Oh my God, how do I pay you? Whatever amount, because they already know they're going to get the value. This has taken three and a half years. Yeah. Patient enough to do this. I am telling you, your life will change. Your life will change. And people are like, I don't want to do it three years for if you don't do these things anyways, three years from now, you're going to be where you are right now, anyways. So exactly. Now in being consistent, in being providing value, in doing all of those things. Serve every single day, sell every single day. I do a lot of free master classes, and clients are messaging me saying, Why aren't you charging for this? You should be paying money because my master yeah. class are quality of an offer. I'm like, I don't mind doing it for free. Right. Buy at the end of it anyways, because I'm like, holy crap, if that's for free, what is she going to do for paid? So give people value. Don't withhold. Right. They're not, if you're withholding now, they're not going to buy from you later. Exactly. They're not going to do it. So give people, if you're doing it for free, give people, but create a name for yourself so that when you come out with stuff, with offers, with product and services, people know that. This name means quality value transformation. Excellent. I love that. I love that. And I, I think when people see that you're being honest and you're not trying to sell them something that they don't need, they're more likely to come back and become re repeat customers and try different things that you're doing, you know, and, and I, I love that. I love that. I love that Absolutely. idea. And they don't, they're not afraid to talk, tell other people about you. Yes, exactly. You're not afraid to tell other people about you. And that is the best referral. The oh, best 100%. 100%. Yeah. You know, I, before we go, I would just, if you have anything to tell the audience, you know, um, people, small businesses, people who are trying to, you know, maybe get into the business and trying to build that brand recognition or people who are, have their minds all over the place because they're trying to, you know, get that business back that they had before COVID. And we mentioned it's never going to happen, but they're trying to build up a new business. 
Do you have any, any, any like last pointers or last tips that help people really think about, you know, things they could start to do to actually put them on the right track? Get mentorship. Yeah. You do, here's the thing. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And it doesn't matter how much I know after 20 years of doing everything I do, I still have blind spots. I oh, 100%. still need, have questions. I still need sometimes, I'll even tell my friends sometimes, let me say this to you, say it back to me so I can hear it outside of yes. my head. Because you need that. And again, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. So honestly, get support. The, the smartest people in the world have mentors for multiple yes. areas life so if they do we probably need it too a hundred percent i agree and you know what people it's not a weakness you know everybody needs a mentor you know because it you know we only use 10 percent of our brain and and sometimes having an unbiased opinion someone outside the box can make a whole a big difference in your life you know in many I want ways to say something to that you said it's not a weakness a lot of people think that asking for help is a is a is a form of weakness. I don't yes. know I don't all that stuff. I will tell you that real leaders, real CEOs, like real entrepreneurs, that is the first thing that they hire. Yes, because they understand it's not a sign of weakness; it's a sign of wisdom. Yes, a hundred percent. And knowing knowing your strengths and knowing where you need help and being able to set down your ego and being able to ask, raise your hand and say, I need help. That's a sign of wisdom. It's not yeah. a sign of wisdom, sign of wisdom. And that's what separates employees from the people that actually run the businesses. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that's a, a great tip for somebody, you know, I, I excellent tip. An excellent tip. Regina, it's been a pleasure having you as always. And you know what? Like I always I said last time, please come back, you know, and you know, share some more of your wisdom because I love having you. I love your conversations. I love the input you put in. You give a lot of really great advice and good knowledge, you know, that I think is going to be very beneficial and help a lot of people out there. So thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your time and for everything that you've, uh, you know, inputted in this conversation. Thank you. I had a great time. Thank and thank you for the invite back. You see, this is the uh, this is the testimonial. This, this is it. This yeah. Is it. I, I had a blast and I hope it serves everybody who's going to listen. Thank you. I'm sure it will. Thank you. You have a great day.